Welcome back everyone. I'm Jason Jensen and you're watching Jason Jensen Trains. In today's episode, I'm going to give you a quick update on the new layout and uh, talk a little bit about placing structures. Well, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and be sure to click on that bell up in the corner to be notified when I upload more videos. And if you'd like to see more work from me, please visit me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and of course YouTube. And just type in Jason Jensen Trains on all of the platforms. So let's move on to a quick update um, on the layout. And I'll show you what I've been working on. So as you can see, I have been placing structures around the layout and moving them around quite a bit just to get the look that I'm after. Um, a very good tip when you are placing structures is to not put anything parallel to the edges of your layout. For example, right here, there is a road and I know um, it's hard seeing and maybe I can take the camera off the tripod and, and show you in a minute what this looks like. But uh, the road does not go straight through. Um, I'm putting a bridge here and it's not straight. It's not parallel with this side here. Um, the road slightly curves and then the bridge instead of being straight is at a little bit of a slant a little bit of an angle going this way so um, same with these buildings um, this structure right here see if you have it parallel with the side and if i turn this one parallel with the side and this little structure when you have a camera and you're taking a picture straight through you're not going to see much of the structures you're going to see a little bit of the ends and a little bit of the sides and then if you have cars you're just going to see the tail lights and if the bridge is straight it's just going to be a flat road going across if you turn these at a slight angle now they're at the same angle that the road curves and if your camera is right here pointing in now you're seeing so much more of the buildings you're seeing different angles and you're getting not just the back of the cars or the front of the car you're now getting a little bit of the side of the car showing up in the photograph and again it might be hard to tell because of the uh, camera angle but uh, even my uh, stone walls nothing is parallel with the edge of the layout everything is at a slight angle and then even my track will come through and curve but even here it's it's slightly curved and it's not going parallel with the side again so slight angle then it's all curved i still have more structures to build and a lot more piers uh, to put in um, everyone has seen me build this structure right here and uh, this gets a pier put under it um, all of these buildings this one and this one get piers um, I have another building here that is going to be a kit bash of three I think it's three structures from Foscale models so 
Um, and I'll show you, we'll head over to the workbench in just a little bit and uh, I'll show you some plans uh, for future builds. So, but a lot of piers, uh, everything gets um, steps built. So, like here, this will get uh, a little dock will come out from the back. You'll go down a flight of stairs. Then you'll be on another level. Go down another flight of stairs. And down to the bottom level. So each level gets stairs and railings put on it. Um, and then lots and lots of details. Um, figures, uh, seagulls, pigeons, um, on and on and on. Just lobster traps. Um, tons and tons of details for this entire area. Another upcoming video, I've gotten so many requests about the clouds and people want me to do a video that is showing in real time how I paint the clouds. And so I will be doing that and most of you have probably seen this portable backdrop that I've painted. Um, I use this when I photograph all of my models for Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, everything. So, um, and what's great is when I'm photographing the layout, I can put a stool and prop this up if I'm photographing this direction or put it here if I'm photographing going out. So I will have an entire video on painting uh, a portable backdrop. Now you can use the same technique for your wall or whatever type of backdrop that you're doing. So, but that will be an entire video coming up. So let's head over to the workbench and um, I'll show you some future plans uh, for structures that are going to be built and give you a close-up look on some of my newest uh, structures like the uh, little fishing shacks that I've been building. So first I'd like to show you some little fishing shacks that I've been working on. And I will be adding more detail to this. Um, all of these get put onto um, small docks. And there'll be crates, barrels, uh, maybe fishing net, buoys hanging on the side. Um, lots of details. What's great about these little shacks is um, they're simple little projects that help you practice on all different techniques. Everything that I did on these, I have separate videos for. I have a separate video for wood shingles. I have a video on painting corrugated metal. I have a video on uh, how to do peeled paint. Um, I have a video on tar paper roof. Um, 
So um, it's it's great to be able to combine all the different tricks and techniques that I've learned onto these little structures. And it's an easy way to um, keep involved in the hobby. Um, this is not a summer hobby. You know, in the summertime, most people have yard work or kids home on, on summer vacation. Um, there's so many things that keep you from doing the hobby and little projects like this. I'm, these three probably took me f three, four evenings. I bet four evenings um, I, I worked on these. So um, just a great little way. And, you know, you can build these for any area of your layout or diorama. They're very easy to place anywhere. I did want to mention real quick that the, uh, the weathering on these were done with pastel chalks. And I used black along the bottom and I brushed it on very lightly. Then I took an olive green and scrubbed my brush over it and then lightly brushed it on. And I don't know if you can tell, it might be hard to see, but there is some green on there. So most of the weathering on these were done with um, pastel chalks. And again, I do not seal these uh, because really they don't get handled. Once these get put onto the layout, um, you're not gonna handle them. So the, uh, the pastels aren't gonna come off. And you would be surprised. You'll actually have to experiment. But once you brush over the pastel and brush it on um, it stays it actually stays on there very well it's not like it's going to blow off or eventually fade away it just stays in place and as long as you're not constantly touching it um, it's going to be fine so there's no need to ever seal any type of weathering chalk on structures possibly on rolling stock Say if you weather a box car and you're going to be handling it to take it on and off track or put it in staging or something, you may want to seal it then. But as far as structures, I don't seal any of mine. Next, I'd like to show you some future projects. Um, I'm going to be working on some boats. Um, I have a great model kit from Seaport Model Works. And I'm really, really looking forward to building this um, and just fully adding lots of detail to it. And then I have um, Oh, I probably have four boats from RustyRail.com. And they're all resin boats. And there's some assembly to them. Um, but just great, great detail. And I will be adding more detail from Rusty Rail, like their um, lobster traps. I'll be adding figures. Um, so they have some really great model boats. Then uh, I have some more structures to build. And I'm going to be building two from Bar Mills. So this one here is 
waterfront willies. A lot of potential with this. Uh, and again, I will be adding lots and lots of detail around the dock on it. Um, I want my harbor scene to be extremely busy looking. And then uh, I'll be working on this one. So again, I will have to build a, a dock for it. I then have a very large project, uh, a kit bash that I am very excited about. Um, I drew this quite a while ago and um, it's combining three kits from Foscale Models. And I'm so excited about building um, this little bridge up here and all these little railings with the rope. I'm very excited about this one. This one starts out, there's a main building and I am using Tower 2 kit. Then, over these two windows, there's a structure that sits on the top of it, and I'm using Hooper's Oysters. And I may have to cut down the length. Um, it may be too long. Uh, we'll see when we get to that point. And there is a structure here with the fish sign on top of it then I'm going to have to scratch build but that'll be completely covered in shingles and then these two get a corrugated metal roof and then this is a tar paper roof then a little bait and tackle shop um, on the end and for that I am using uh, it was a free kit from uh, Foss Scale Models. And I'll be making some changes to it, but uh, that'll go right there on the end. Possibly. If this gets too long and I don't have the room, I may have to leave that off and just build um, this, this side of it. So, but I am uh, extremely, extremely excited about this. Uh, and as you can see, I'm going to add lobster traps and netting. Um, there'll be cleats uh, along the edge. Um, but I think this will be pretty dramatic having um, stairs or some type of plank uh, where you walk up to this level. And... Uh, the bridge going across with the ropes um, just it'll be an extremely detailed uh, part of the harbor so as you can see I have a container and I bought this at Michaels and I think you get maybe five of them uh, I forget the dollar amount sorry but um, uh, they're really nice containers and what I've been doing is putting anything that um, has a nautical theme to it, I've been putting it inside this container. So it's stuff that I will um, be using on the layout in my harbor scene. So you have lots of cleats. Um, here's uh, figures that I'll be using. Uh, the figures are from Model Tech Studios. The cleats are also from Model Tech Studio. Here are seagulls. And again, they're from Model Tech Studio. There's life rings from Seaport Model Works. I have quite a few life rings. And then some cleats 
from uh, Seaport Model Works. Some vents, a vent and a pipe from RustyRail.com. Some pigeons. Titchy Train Group. TitchyTrainGroup.com sells these uh, really nice jigs, or I'm sorry, <laughs> jib cranes. Um, we have some fish netting, more birds. Uh, these are nice, the uh, channel markers. So this is stuff that was kind of scattered in different containers that I've collected over the years. I didn't just buy this all for <laughs> the area that I'm working on now. Um, it's leftovers from possibly other jobs, other projects that I've done. Um, so I've just been collecting stuff for quite a while. Um, here are crates. Um, some more crates. Uh, these are from RustyRail.com. Lots of uh, lobster traps. Um, I've got some boats. So you have piles of uh, lobster traps with different uh, ropes and pulleys and just nautical type stuff sitting on it. So as you can see, there's just tons and tons of stuff. Um, I have shingles for the kit bash that I was uh, just showing you. Um, these are the shingles that will go on the one structure that I have to completely scratch build. So lots of uh, crates and barrels, um, little boats. So um, if, if you find yourself wanting to do something pertaining to your layout or pertaining to um, your diorama, but you don't have the time, start start a box or a container that all of your details are going to go into um, that you know that you're going to be using when you do have the time. Um, this is just great in the evening to walk into my workshop and go through some boxes and, you know, dig out nautical themed stuff and just keep adding to this container knowing that um, eventually I will have time to to work on my layout and it'll be nice to have everything in one container. So next we are building a pier for our um, Pendleton Marine. Uh, I built this some time ago on uh, the channel. And so now we're building this um, little dock for it. So I have cut out the center for two reasons. A, it's, it's not going to show. And I can use that wood for other small uh, little piers that I need to build. And um, I could also easily add lights later on through this opening. So I first stained the wood using neutral gray. And I did it with a pretty wide brush. Uh, the widest one, I could have used a wider one, but I had this handy. So, and I did both sides at the same time. Then I used my hair dryer and dried it completely. I then made a wash of burnt umber and went over it again. Let that dry. I then added a little bit more of the burnt umber to my water to make it a little bit thicker 
and went in and painted some individual boards. Um, now I'm going to take, uh, oh, we'll just take some dark brown to start with, to see what that looks like. Uh, maybe we'll do some, I have some dark grays. And then we can just kind of blend it out. So uh, you get the idea. Um, you can definitely make it look more like individual boards because this is one solid, one solid piece. Um, I got this from Northeastern Scale Lumber. And then once the building is on there, uh, we can dirty it up where there's like heavy foot traffic. Uh, so we'll definitely add some dirt and grime to it. I'm going to stain some wood that is uh, an eighth of an inch wide and probably a 32nd of an inch thick. And I am going to, we'll flip this upside down and I'll probably take uh, four or five of these and we'll space them. I'll do one here, here. So, like I said, four or five of uh, wood ones that are stained to match. Then we are going to, because we're going to do a, a whole bunch of these, a whole bunch of these. And sort of to cut down on cost, what I'm using, we're going to fill them in with these. And what this is, is a thick thick um, watercolor paper and it actually is the same thickness so it's about a 32nd of an inch thick and you probably can't see it but it has a texture to it now what I've done is I took my uh, neutral gray and I painted it and now you can see there's definitely texture to the paper and if you want to, you can take sandpaper and just in one direction, or let me see, uh, maybe not so much with the wire brush, but the sandpaper roughs it up a little bit. Um, I did a little bit up here, if you can see it. So then, um, I probably should have done a wash of the burnt umber over it too. But once they're glued in place, I'll see what it looks like. And I may add some burnt umber to it. But uh, what I did after that, after it was painted, is I cut it into strips that are one eighth of an inch wide. And then we'll glue these all in place. And give me one second and I'll grab another model uh, that we're gonna match it to. Okay, so I grabbed uh, this model, which all of you have seen me build. And there is what it's gonna look like. So, like I said, we'll do four or five of them out of real wood and then do the rest out of cardboard, or not cardboard, but the thick uh, watercolor paper. And uh, it's really simply just to save some money. Um, I don't want to buy that large amount because I have a lot of these to build uh, for the layout. So, um, I'm hoping this, and it definitely will help me save some money and by having only a few of them wood uh, that'll give me the strength because then what we have to do is put 
um, pieces that go this direction underneath it. Sorry, off camera. <laughs> so uh, these pieces that go this direction, uh, those will be wood, but I can do the front one wood and maybe the back one the watercolor paper. Uh, and then same with the the cross. The cross is all on here. Um, I'm going to mix and match. Some will be wood and some will be the watercolor paper. You just by looking at it you'll never know the difference of which one is wood and which one is watercolor paper. I should mention too that the reason we're using um, the wood ones in here is that this is slightly bowed and by putting our wood strips under it it will make it um, straight and also give it some strength. So I glued on the the wood ones, the wood strips on there, and I used a uh, super glue because I wanted to make sure that it was going to be very strong and hold this uh, very flat. And then I've cut all of my paper ones, and then uh, I'll get all of those glued in place. So real quick, I wanted to show you that I got all of the... Uh, the wood strips glued in place and all of the watercolor strips all glued on there. Some are wavy in the center. Uh, they're not perfectly straight, but um, you know, it'll be underneath. So really uh, the only thing you'll see is the, the edge. All right, so next we're, we are gonna cut all of our um, wooden dowels and uh, we're going to cut them all the same height and then glue them all in place and then we will take some more strip wood and glue some going this direction as you can see I got all my pilings glued on um, my strip wood going this way. Next, I'm going to take my uh, watercolor paper that I have painted and I have to put strips on the back side of all of these pilings. Okay, so all of the cross sections are done. So you can see um, I left it the unstained wood and then the uh, paper was painted so that you could see um, the difference. But once I paint all that, it'll all match and you won't even know the difference between the wood and the paper. So it is finished. Um, it took quite a bit, quite a bit of work, but um, I'm really happy with it. And like I said, you can't really tell what's paper, what's wood. Here is the structure on it. So I am now going to build my crane. Um, there is a crane that sits on this corner right here and then I've got some cleats to paint and glue on here I've got some ladders uh, maybe one in the back corner here one here and one over on this end and then I'll uh, Paint all of my detail castings. I've got lobster traps and barrels and crates. And we'll see what else we can add to it. Maybe hang some netting on it. Let me zoom out a little bit. You get the full, the full picture.
I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope it was helpful and informative. Um, thank you to everyone who has already subscribed to the channel. Um, I appreciate it so much. I, I really do. And I appreciate hearing from all of you. Um, I love getting all of the feedback. So, so thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. Well, I think that's it for today. Um, again, I hope it was uh, helpful. And remember, just because it's summertime doesn't mean you have to completely stop uh, doing any type of modeling. There's always small projects like I showed you today that you can be working on. So, all right. Thanks for watching, everyone. And until next time, happy modeling.